Hello everyone, it's Dr. Omide again. We continue with our embryology series. This is about the third um, week after fertilization. So in the third week, that is when you form um, the trilaminar disc. So the process um, of gastrulation occurs. So you're going to form three germ layers, the ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. So how does this begin? You begin with the formation of a midline groove on the epiblast. And this midline groove on the epiblast is what we call the primitive streak. The primitive streak has a cephalic end, the cranial portion, which is the primitive node. And this primitive node has a central portion called a primitive pit. Now, epiblastic cells usually migrate and reach the primitive streak. After they have reached the primitive streak, what happens? They sleep under the primitive streak or invaginate under the primitive streak and form the endoderm. Okay, then after that, we have a second wave of epiblastic cells that migrate to the primitive streak. They form intra embryonic mesoderm. And lastly, the remaining cells of the epiblastic cells will now form the ectoderm. So, epiblast generally is the source of the three germ layers. They will migrate, reach the primitive streak, sleep under it and form endoderm. Second grade form intraembryonic mesoderm and the remaining form the ectoderm. Remember before we talked of extraembryonic mesoderm that was formed from epiblastic and hypoblastic um, cells and uh, they developed species that coalesced to form extraembryonic um, coelom which became the chorionic cavity. But in this case we are now discussing intraembryonic mesoderm, which is a second wave from the epiblastic cells. So epiblast is the source of the endoderm, intraembryonic mesoderm, and ectoderm. So basically this is what happens. So gastrulation, where you have your epiblastic cells that will form a primitive streak, and um, epiblastic cells invaginate below the primitive streak to form endoderm, followed by mesoderm, intraembryonic mesoderm, then um, remaining cells from ectoderm. So epiblast will form a primitive streak, okay? And from these uh, 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 epiblastic cells, you also get ectoderm that will form, and more epiblastic cells will form the ectoderm from the um, amnion. Remember, it is from these uh, epiblastic cells of the primitive streak that invaginate to now form endoderm, followed by mesoderm, then uh, intraembryonic mesoderm and the remaining ones now form the ectoderm. Now, and we have an autocode process that will also form from the primitive streak. So those are the columnar epiblastic cells. The hypoblastic cells form the endoderm of the yolk sac that become the extraembryonic mesoderm. So basically you can see from this is your primitive streak that has formed Okay, and the cranial portion has a primitive node and the center will be a primitive pit. So epiblastic cells will now invaginate the epiblastic layer and first form the um, endoderm, followed by invaginating mesodermal cell. Then the remaining epiblastic cells will now transform and become uh, ectoderm. This is your primitive streak that forms. It develops a groove at the center, the primitive groove, the cephalic portion forms primitive node and at the center is the primitive pit. So from this node is where we form our notochord. So what is the significance of the primitive streak? It helps to form the notochord and it provides or rather determines the direction of the embryo. Those are the main significance. Notochord formation and to determine the direction of the embryo. So when you are to look at it, um, this is your um, not a code process that is growing. So if this is your primitive uh, streak that has formed, this is your pit, and the not a code now grows cranially from the primitive pit. So it grows this way. So it helps um, in the formation of the not a code. Then remember, all these things are occurring concurrently. So it's the primitive um, streak. Here is your primitive streak. Okay. So with a primitive groove, primitive node, and primitive pit. So it's from this portion that cranially growing towards the precordial plate will have the notochord growing this way. So the first um, cells of the primitive streak will invaginate the epiblastic cells and form endoderm, 
followed by second wave of intrabronic mesoderm, then the remaining epiblastic cells of the primitive streak will form your ectoderm. So this is your primitive uh, node and pit, and you can see the notochord growing towards the precordial plate. So prenotochordal cells invaginating in the pit, they move forward and cephalad to the precordial plate. And the prenotochordal cells then become intercalated in the hypoblast. So as the hypoblast is replaced by endoderm, remember, cells from the primitive streak invaginate, then replace the displace the hypoblast. So when hypoblast is replaced by endoderm, uh, cells moving in at the streak, the cells in the notochordal plate proliferate and detach the endoderm. They then form a solid code of cells, and that's the definitive notochord. So this is your definitive notochord. So what are the functions of a notochord? Number one, this is your notochord here. Okay, so um, the, as the cells of the endoderm are replacing hypoblasts, the cells of the notochordal plate proliferate and detach from the endoderm. And you can see now it's existing by itself, just detached from the endoderm. This is the endoderm, embryonic endoderm. So notochord forms a basis of axial skeleton, and axial skeleton is formed by skull and vertebra. Number two, it induces the overlying ectoderm. This is the overlying ectoderm to thicken and form neuroplate. And it's from this neuroplate that will form the central nervous system. So it induces overlying ectoderm to thicken and form a neuroplate. It forms a basis of the axial skeleton. Number three, usually degenerates and uh, remnants of it form the nucleus. This is the nucleus pulposus of the intervertebral disc. Intervertebral discs are discs in between the vertebra. In between each vertebra, you have intervertebral disc, and it's usually made up of outer fibrocartilaginous annulus fibrosus, made up of fibrocartilage and inner gel like substance, nucleus pulposus. So, nucleus pulposus is the remnant of the notochord. And the last function of the notochord, it acts as a prime inducer in the early embryo. So, it helps to uh, move signals that will transform and specialize embryonic cells to definitive adult tissue. So it's a primary inducer of how the early embryo develops into definitive adult tissues. So those are the four functions of the notochord. Basis of axoskeleton, induce overlying ectoderm to thicken and form neuroplate, degenerates and remains as nucleus pulposus of the intervertebral disc, and acts as a primary inducer in the early embryo formation. So this is your notochord. It's growing this way. And you can see it's an inducer, so we have all these factors that will be produced and helps the uh, an undifferentiated embryo tissue to form definitive adult um, cells. So again, this is your primitive streak, primitive um, node and pit, and your notochord that is growing, cephalar towards the precordial plate, and is able to provide an axis for development of the embryo. Again, primitive, uh, this is notochord growing towards the precordial plate. You can see from the primitive pit, the notochord is growing towards the precordial plate. So basically that is it for the primitive streak, it grows. And you can see that the notochord is able to induce the overlying ectoderm to thicken and form a neuroplate. And it's from this neuroplate that will form the brain and spinal cord, which is part of the central nervous system. So what is sacrococcygeal teratoma? When the primitive streak persists, it usually proliferates and forms a growth at the sacrococcygeal area. This is sacrococcygeal teratoma. So we can bring you this picture in steeple chest and ask you identify the malformation and state the embryonic basis. This is sacrococcygeal teratoma caused by persistence of the primitive streak, leading to proliferation of um, the pluripotent cells within the sacrococcygeal area. So you'll find hair, nail, whatever, all types of cells because this was very important um, cells. So in the embryonic period, embryonic period is from third to eighth week. So you form the three layers. So the ectoderm will give you CNS, brain and spinal cord, PNS, cranial and um, spinal nerves, skin and pituitary gland. Those are the derivatives of ectoderm. Endoderm gives you epithelial lining of gastrointestinal tract, epithelial lining of respiratory tract, and part of the urinary tract. Then intraembryonic mesoderm, what does it give you? It usually differentiates into four parts. You have the axial mesoderm. This is where you have your primitive streak, primitive node, and notochord. So some people consider it as axial mesoderm. But in many books, they divide mesoderm into three. Number one, paraxial mesoderm. 
mesoderm around this primitive streak, primitive node and notopod. It's made up of 35 pairs of the somites and this usually form sclerotome. Sclerotome is what will give you cartilage and bones of the vertebra. Then followed by myotome. Myotome will give you the skeletal muscles around these cartilages and bones of the vertebra. Then dermatome. Dermatome forms the dermis and the hypodermis of the skin. The second layer of the mesoderm is the intermediate cell mass and this gives you the kidney and the genital um, system. So the genital tracts, the um, uterus, fallopian tubes. So kidneys and genital system come from intermediate cell mass. Then lastly, the lateral plate mesoderm. So this is your notochord. Then intermediate me uh, mesoderm is here. So this is paraxial mesoderm. Okay. And then intermediate. And this is the lateral mesoderm. So what happens? Lateral mesoderm differentiates into two. Somatopluric and splanchnopluric. Because this will be inner splanchnopluric, outer somatopluric. It develops cavities that will form intraembryonic silom. So intraembryonic silom are cavities within the lateral plate mesoderm that divide it into an outer somatopluric and inner splanchnopluric intraembryonic mesoderm. Outer somatopluric forms voluntary muscles of the chest and abdomen as well as the parietal layer of pleura and peritoneum from outer somatopluric. Meanwhile, the inner splanchnopluric intraembryonic mesoderm forms involuntary muscles of the heart, the bronchial tree, and the gut. It also forms a visceral layer of pleura and peritoneum. So splanchnopluric forms involuntary muscles, smooth muscles. Somatopluric forms voluntary muscles, which are skeletal muscles. Somatopluric forms outer layer or parietal layer of pleura and peritoneum, while splanchnopleura forms visceral layer of pleura and peritoneum. The cavity of the lateral plate mesoderm is the intraembryonic silom, and this silom will form the cavities in the body, pericardial cavity that houses the heart, peritoneal cavity that houses the abdominal organs, and pleural cavity that houses the two lungs. So those come from intraembryonic silom, the space within the lateral uh, mesoderm. And this intraembryonic silom, these cavities, their outer layers, the parietal layers are from somatopleura, while their visceral layers are from the inner um, splanchnopleuric mesoderm of the lateral plate mesoderm. So we have regions where you only have ectoderm and endoderm with no mesoderm. These include the bucopharyngeal membrane that will uh, form eventually the oral cavity at the cephalic end and the cloacal membrane at the caudal end that will form the anal cavity. So those portions like, uh, will only contain the, you can see the cloacal plate here, will only contain ectoderm, endoderm with no mesoderm. So then we have the allantois. Allantois, here it is. It's a diverticulum on the posterior wall of the yolk sac. This is your yolk sac. So on the posterior wall of the yolk sac, you have the allantois that extends to the connecting stock. This is your connecting stock. And um, so basically, the ectoderm gives you neural tube, CNS, brain and spinal cord. And this neural tube, how does it develop? Notochord induces the overlying ectoderm to form neural plate. And this neural plate develops groove and the sides will form folds. After they fold, they now join to form neural tube. Okay, so neural plate has developed a groove and the sides are the folds. So these folds will now come together and form your neural tube. This is your mesoderm, paraxial mesoderm that will form sclerotome, myotome and dermatome. The intermediate mesoderm that will give you kidneys, okay, and the genital tracts, and then lateral mesoderm that will give you inner splanchnopleuric and outer somatopleuric mesoderm. So you can see the neural folds have come together. They will eventually form neural tube. This is the notochord that induced the neural uh, uh, overlying ectoderm to form neural plate that developed grooves. Then folds come together, and where the folds fuse, you release some cells, which are the neural crest cells. And we'll ask you to list the derivatives of neural crest cells. There are many, and you need to know like 10. So connective tissue of face and skull, cranial nerve ganglia, C cells of the thyroid gland, conotranchal septum in the heart, odontoblasts in the teeth, the dermis of face and neck, spinal ganglia, sympathetic chain, adrenal medulla, Schwann cells, glial cells, arachnoid and pyamata, and melanocytes. So these are the 
derivatives of neural crest.